Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making Bohemian style banana nut bread. This bread is delicious. You definitely want to stick around for this recipe. Everything will be listed for you below in the description box. <coughs> a fun fact about me is I'm actually a baker. I do have a small business where I bake custom cakes on the weekends. Well, pretty much all throughout the week. <laughs> but I'm trying to narrow it down to the weekends. But needless to say, I think I know a thing or two when it comes to bacon. So let's get into these ingredients. And here we have a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. We also have here one stick of butter. I'm using an Irish butter. When you're baking honey, if you want something delicious, then you use a butter that's high in fat. And our Irish butters are usually higher in fat than your normal American butter. So I'm using one stick of that butter. I'm also using one cup of sugar, two large eggs, these juicy bananas. Okay, this is the banana that you need for banana bread. It needs to look like this. You want to see those black spots on it. That means that banana is very, very ripe and it's going to give you that nice, natural banana flavor and sweetness because it's so ripe. This recipe really only calls for three large ripe bananas mashed, but honey, I have four. So the more the merrier. I'm using all four. Don't need to throw that one away. We're also going to be using some chopped walnuts and seedless raisins. And I'm using a half a cup of walnuts and a half a cup of raisin. And that's completely optional, but it really, really adds a nice twist to your banana bread. We need two cups of flour and that is completely it guys so now what i'm gonna do is just mix in all my dry ingredients i like to do this even when i'm baking because what this does is it just ties everything in together you ever put everything in a mixer or a bowl that you're baking then when you turn that mixer on everything goes flying everywhere and you're not sure what went flying you're not sure if it's the baking soda the baking powder the salt but when you mix everything together it's already evenly mixed before you put it into the mixer. So it just makes your life a lot easier. And when something flies out, you don't have to worry about the measurement being completely off because it was already evenly mixed to begin with. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to mash up my banana and my Haitian mash pilon. I'm not sure what you call this in English, to be honest with you, but I put it in there and then I just use the mashed pilon and I mash it all up. And I just like to prep before because it just makes your life easier. So as soon as it's all mashed and it looks like this, I am going to scoop it out in a bowl and set that aside until it's time to add it to our mixture. Now you need your butter at room temperature. This is what room temperature butter looks like. When you put your finger down on it, your finger should be able to easily press down on that butter without having to force it. That's when you know you have the perfect room temperature butter. Now I'm going to add that into my mixer and I'm using the paddle attachment so it's not too harsh on the batter but this recipe is so easy you can make it with a hand mixer now i'm going to cream my butter and sugar together so i'm putting in that room temperature butter and my sugar and i'm going to run it on a low speed and let my butter and sugar cream together When my butter and sugar is all creamed nicely, I'm going to add my eggs in, but I'm only adding it one at a time to make sure that it's completely incorporated. After I add my eggs in, I'm going to let that mix for a full minute and a half. Now I'm going to add in my dry ingredients.
After I add in all my dry ingredients, it's nicely mixed in. Now it's time to add in those juicy bananas. I'm going to let that mix for one full minute and then I'm adding in my walnuts and raisins. At this point, you can actually use your spatula to fold it in or if you're using a paddle attachment like me, just let that mix for about 20 seconds and that is completely it. It's that simple, guys. Now I'm going to use my spatula to make sure I give it one last good mix. I always do this and make sure I get everything that's sitting in the corners that probably didn't get mixed in correctly with the paddle attachment. Mm, you saw I just did that. It's so good. <laughs> it is really good. So I just taste a little bit of that batter and it's approved. So now we are moving to the pan. I'm gonna spray that with some Baker's Joy. You could just do butter and flour, but a bacon spray just makes your life so much easier. And now I'm going to just scoop all of that batter right into my pan. And I'm going to use my spatula to just smooth it all out so it bakes as evenly as possible. Now, you know us behemoths, we extra. So even after I did that, I'm still going to shake it around and I'm still going to tap it on my counter because you want to make sure you get all of those air bubbles out. This also helps your banana bread to bake as even as possible. We're going to bake our banana bread slowly at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to one hour. I baked mine for one complete hour, but at 45 minutes, you can definitely check it in. Use a toothpick and stick in there and see if it's ready. Mine took exactly an hour and this is what it looked like after an hour. And this is so beautiful, so nice, so moist guys. Like I said, this is a very delicious banana bread. I've been using this recipe for many years and and it has never failed me. So definitely go ahead and try this recipe out and come back and let me know what you guys think of it, how it worked out for you guys. As I just love hearing from you guys and the comments also help other viewers. So definitely leave a comment for us and let us know how did it work out for you? And if there's something else that you add to your banana bread that I don't add, I would also like to know, and maybe the next time I do this recipe, I can try that and see how it works. One thing you can do is you can also replace the white granulated sugar. You can use light brown or dark brown sugar, and that is definitely okay to do. Thank you guys for kicking in here in the kitchen with me today. I hope you enjoyed this recipe as much as I enjoyed bringing it for you. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you love what we're doing here in this kitchen. I would love to have you a part of my family here on YouTube. And in this kitchen, we cook up all different kind of delicious meals and we branch out to different cultures. So you definitely want to be a part of our family because there's always something good cooking up in the kitchen. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another episode. Bon appétit!